How's it going everyone? Welcome to Asian Filmist. My name is Ray and I love movies. And the movie I'm going to be talking about today is My Girlfriend is a Cyborg, otherwise known as Cyborg She. And it's a 2008 Japanese movie directed by Kok Jae Young. And I hope I pronounced his name right. I'm not really familiar with pronouncing Korean names. But he is known for directing the hit movies My Sassy Girl and Windstruck. And they were huge in Korea. And My Sassy Girl kind of set the standard for Korean rom-coms for many years to come. And even to today, arguably. But yeah, My Girlfriend is a Cyborg stars Koide Keisuke and Ayase Haruka. And something that I thought that was interesting, it was created to be the final installment of a trilogy that was started off by My Sassy Girl, continue with Windstruck, and then concludes with this movie. And I guess you can call it the Sassy Girl Trilogy or the Strange Girl Trilogy, depending on the way you want to translate it. But I remember watching My Girlfriend is a Cyborg way back when it first came out. And you know, at the time, I genuinely liked it. But you know, watching it nine years later, I have a lot of different opinions about this movie. But before diving deeply into it, let's talk a bit about the story. So My Girlfriend is a Cyborg centers around Jiro, who is played by Koide Keisuke. And he, you know, he's a pretty lonely guy. He goes and celebrates his birthday by himself, uh, buys presents for himself. But one day, as he's celebrating his birthday, this mysterious yet beautiful girl approaches him and decides to be his companion for his birthday. And pretty much she joins him at the dinner table and then grabs his hand and they run about throughout the town and just have a ball. But at the end of this eventful night, she reveals that she has to go back home from where she came from. And that is, in fact, the future. And so she says goodbye and disappears. But one year later, on Dero's birthday, she comes back, but she's noticeably different. And as you may have noticed, by reading the title, this girl is in fact a cyborg and she's sent into the past uh, by future Jiro so that she may correct some wrongs that are about to happen in Jiro's near future. So it sounds like a nice mishmash of things. So yeah, let's get right into the review. Let's start with the things that I enjoyed about this movie. I'll start off by saying that the two lead characters are instantly likable and they're well performed by the two lead actors. You know, the most props go to Ayase in her portrayal as a cyborg as you know, at times it's pretty freaky how robotic she can be and it's funny you know and the comedy in this movie it's well timed and it's cute and you know definitely emphasis on the word comedy because usually Japanese romantic stories are more on the dramatic side but I guess that's what you can expect from the director of My Sassy Girl bringing his flair into Japanese cinema and there's so many clever well thought out easter eggs and references to other bits of pop culture and those include the classic science fiction franchise The Terminator and also the very famous anime Neon Genesis Evangelion and you know the visual effects for its time were well done. You know, this is a movie that was released in 2008 and I thought, you know, the special effects really hold up to this day. Granted, it's not a movie centered around the use of special effects, but when it's used, it's used pretty well. And you know, if you enjoy love stories and romantic comedy, this movie hits all the right points, I think. But those are for you who are looking for something of a more serious movie, that's where a lot of these next few bads come into place. So let's talk about the things I thought that were bad about My Girlfriend is a Cyborg. First off, let's just put it out there, there are a lot of time paradoxes, you know, and that's something to be expected when you have a story centered around time travel. And you know, honestly, I think it's just hard to write stories centered around time travel, especially when a lot of your plot points are about changing the future. You know, some of it just doesn't make sense, but you know, this movie, you know, admittedly, it does take those paradoxes and just goes with it, and you can still have an enjoyable story. But yeah, expect to have plenty of paradoxes and just events that just don't really make sense. And another thing I thought that was quite disappointing about this movie is the character of Jiro. And I said earlier that the two lead characters were really likable and enjoyable and you know, they are. They generally are likable if you're just looking for a character whose sole purpose is just to be the male lead in a romantic comedy. But I thought the character Jiro himself was quite inconsistent and you know, his art at times just didn't make sense. You know, at one point he's a lovable loner, you know, he's a caring nice guy. But then at a point in the story he turns whiny and selfish all for the really wrong reasons and some parts just didn't make sense about his whole character turn. And it was something that I thought was quite odd is that he's given a lot of backstory and they dive quite deeply into this backstory. And you know, usually when they do this in a movie, it's for the sole purpose at kind of helping the character's growth go along. But it really didn't have much impact to his character growth really at all. Like you can pretty much take out every single scene of flashback that dives into his backstory and the movie wouldn't change. And you know, while I thought Jiro was 
pretty inconsistent. I thought the cyborg was pretty inconsistent as well. Like at times it felt like the film was trying to make her out to be the emotionless cyborg type. But then she puts on the smile and has a warm personality only a few scenes later. And also they weren't really clear as to the extent of her powers. Like in many scenes she uses her super speed and super strength to rescue different types of people. But in another scene she merely just pushes someone out of the way and lets rubble fall on top of her without even trying to run away with their super speed. And another thing I thought that was a little disappointing is this film is loaded with a lot of montages that make themselves out to be like short mini music videos because you know if you want to establish characters and their relationships very quickly in a story you know you can just make a montage and you know on their own they're really cute they're really they're really nice and especially if you're a fan of Korean rom-coms but at times they just drag on and you just want the story to continue along and lastly you know I thought there was a bit of overacting especially coming from Takenaka Naoto and his really over exaggerated comedic efforts but you know if you're a fan of Takenaka Naoto and you're a fan of the way he tries to make people laugh then you might not have a problem with it but you know I've seen Takenaka enough in movies to the point where I'm pretty used to the way he shapes his faces just to get some laughs out of people. And so for me, you know, because I'm used to it, it personally didn't bother me as much, but at the same time, I can see how it can turn other people off. But you know, I feel kind of bad saying all these bad things about a rom-com, you know, it does what it intends to do. And you know, the bottom line is, it's a story for fans who want to feel good with no regrets. But at the same time, I kind of feel like the story is geared for those guys, you know, who idolize girls and put them on a pedestal. Like, you know, the average guy is suffering from unrequited love who's trying to get that unobtainable girl. And even though this is a Japanese movie, it really caters to fans of Korean style romantic comedies and even science fiction and you know, superhero movies. And you know, that being said, this movie really suffers from director Kok Jae Young's abuse of the genre switch, in which so many themes and so many subgenres are squeezed into one movie. And in effect, it really makes the story and narrative really muddled and really inconsistent. But you know, if you're a fan of Korean dramas and romantic comedies, and especially My Sassy Girl, this movie is recommended for you. And you can see a lot of parallels and inspirations from My Sassy Girl that the director brings over into My Girlfriend is a Cyborg. And as I said, earlier when I watched it the first time years ago I genuinely enjoyed it you know but you know watching it now I still kind of liked it but at the same time I really had to watch it the way it was intended to be watched but yeah those are my thoughts about my girlfriend is a cyborg what did you guys think whatever your thoughts are leave a comment below and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to Asian Filmist for more reviews and discussions on Asian films you can even follow us on Facebook and Twitter and if you subscribe to our email newsletter you can receive a free copy of our ebook the 108 Asian films for new fans to watch once again my name is Ray you can follow me on Twitter at Raymond 555 and and yeah, that's about it. Alright everyone, I'm about to watch some more movies. I'll be back soon, yeah? Promise.